and welcome back to Industrial Theory. I'm your host, Carrie Siggin, CEO of Stone Age. And today I have a very special guest on the show, Eric Sanderson. Eric Sanderson is a project manager for the OCL Group based in Canada. And he is going to share his story of surviving a water jet cut. He was cut from his calf to his stomach uh, back in 2015. And it was uh, very lucky that he made it. And he's going to share a little bit of his story and what he thinks about training in the industry. It's not an easy story to share, but one that I think it's really important for the industry to hear. So I'm really appreciative that he took the time to come on and, and tell us a little bit about what happened and how he survived. So hang tight and I'll re be right back with Eric. All right, everyone, I am back with Eric Sanderson. Eric, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Not a problem. All right, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in the industrial cleaning industry. So I moved to Fort Mac, I think I was 18 or 19, and that was the uh, first job that uh, I kind of got accepted for, and I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> Explain Fort Mac for all the people who don't know what Fort Mac is. <laughs> oh, it's an oil town in uh, in Alberta and uh, moved from Ontario right, uh, right from 18 years old and been doing it ever since. Did you know anything about industrial cleaning before you got thing. started? You were just applying for jobs? Yeah, not a thing, not a thing, yeah. <laughs> what was it like out there not knowing anything and uh, and then getting started? Uh, it was a huge difference from what I was used to. Like I've never done night shift before. Came out of construction and then, uh, yeah, seeing all the big equipment and everything else, it was uh, quite a change for sure. And was it scary learning how to use water jetting equipment? Yes and no. Like until like the first time I grabbed the dump gun. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, this has a lot of, a lot of power behind it. But yeah, it was different for sure from what I was used to. And what kind of training did you get back then on on how to perform uh, high pressure water jetting? Uh, back then, it was mostly just learn as you go. <laughs> there wasn't <laughs> much. You did a little bit of theory, like a little bit of online training, but uh, other than that, it was mostly uh, mentorship from uh, yeah. the people you were working with. Yeah. And do you mentor people coming into the industry now? Oh, we most definitely do. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll do, actually, I think we uh, put our guys through your guys' training, the, uh, the theory training, and then we partner them up with another guy until they're competent enough to go on their on their own. Tell yeah. us a little bit about the company who you work for now. OCL, so we started uh, doing this industrial cleaning part of OCL, uh, I think January 21. So uh, last year was pretty good. This year is extremely busy and uh, it just keeps getting busier and busier. What's the primary focus of the business? So OCL does, uh, it's like a group of companies, but uh, we okay. we started a technical services, which is doing industrial high pressure and chemical cleaning. Gotcha. Yeah. So it wasn't, you guys just started it? It wasn't like an acquisition or was it? Yeah, no, uh, we just started it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So tell us what you like best about the water jetting industry and what do you think needs to change? Uh, what I like best is the way that it, things have been going in uh, the terms of like technology. Everything's getting a lot easier to do. Uh, like you guys are making great stuff. Other companies are making great stuff. It's taking people out of uh, harm's way. So that's what I really like to see for sure. And how? what do you think needs to change? I don't know. I think it's changing for the right in the right direction. That's for sure. Automation, more automation. <laughs> Do you think that will attract more people to the industry? Uh, I don't know. That's getting harder and harder to get more and more people involved. That's for sure. So. Yeah, that's that's what we're hoping that when it's maybe not quite such as hard and dangerous work doing it manually that that we figure out a way to be able to attract more people into the industry because um, I think it's the same all over the world, right? There's nobody who wants to to go in there and do and get cleaning dirty. activities. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Takes a special breed. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. People always people always ask me like, "How did you get into this industry?" And I was like, "Well, only by accident. 
much yeah. like you, right? Yeah. I was applying for a job, although, you know, I'm on the different side of the business, but a lot of people don't understand um, why we would do this, but it's such an important aspect of supply chain, right? Every single thing that we use is manufactured in a facility and the equipment needs to be clean. So industrial cleaning is just a hugely important industry, even though nobody pays attention to it. Nobody understands the impact and it's not very glamorous. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But it all needs to be done in the end. That's for sure. That's right. That's right. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about um, a story, your story. So you were involved in an almost fatal incident involving a water jet cut. So can you tell us what happened? Like walk us through what you were doing, how it happened and, and what the aftermath was. So um, yeah, back in 2015, uh, we were going to do a high pressure cut with a uh, with the cutting gear and we were cutting about, I think it was an inch and a half of steel. And uh, the machine, we had it all set up. We we're getting ready to do the cut and lining up everything. And uh, once we got going, it started tracking odd. And I just leaned over to take a look and the, uh, the machine popped off and it kind of, kind of nipped me. And then uh, off to the hospital you go. <laughs> So it, it was, was more uh, than a nip. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit more than a nip, yeah. Uh, yeah, I got cut from uh, the bottom of my calf up to uh, into my stomach, basically, so that I got a free appendicitis out of it. Like, they got to take that away. And I didn't have to, you know. And, uh, yeah, I was in the hospital for about three weeks. And then I think uh, about three months, I was back to work. So, wow. But, yeah. And so how was it almost fa fatal? Tell us about those, the, you know, that, that initial, what happened in those first few hours and days? Uh, so, uh, well, infection, I was lucky enough. I didn't, uh, the, the water jet didn't hit the bone in my leg, uh, which would have been really bad. And I think, uh, the cut itself was about a half a centimeter from your femoral artery. So that would have been really bad as well. Um, but yeah. I got lucky uh, to where, you know, the infection and the artery, that's, that was the main thing. Once I got to the hospital, uh, they patched me up really well and um, cleaned me up pretty good and, uh, and taped me up and I was good to go. <laughs> what was the recovery like? What was that three months like, you know, when you got out of the hospital to when you went back to work? Um, so there was, yeah, there was lots of physio. There was lots of, uh, cause the muscle in my leg was cut in half. So that had to be, uh, worked on, um, going back to work. I think mentally, uh, I remember the first time I heard high pressure again, it was a little bit eerie, but, uh, you get back on the horse and away you go, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Was yeah. it painful? Was it a painful recovery? Um, I, yes, I guess it was painful. Like, uh, the actual cut itself, I, you know, you're in shock. So, uh, you don't really feel much and they're, they're putting a lot of, uh, a lot of drugs into your system to keep you from the pain. But, uh, afterwards, yeah, like it's been, what, seven years now. So remembering the pain, I guess there was pain for sure, but like, that's not really the, I don't really remember how painful it was type thing. Yeah. Yeah. We humans are good at forgetting pain. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I know for sure. <laughs> and so, you know, what we, you talked a little bit about the, um, the eeriness hearing it. Did you have any other mental things that you had to, to kind of get over or any PTSD uh, had, when you were starting out again? I don't think so. I think it was just that initial uh, like, the first time we were doing a test on a, on a 3d after it was rebuilt in a tank just in, in the yard and I could hear it. And I was like, Oh, that's uh brings back uh falling over on the deck of a scaffold <laughs> cut in half almost. <laughs> yeah. But then Pretty after, bad. after that, it wasn't too, too bad. Uh, you know, like you, you get back into it and, in like the more today today things aren't nearly as uh, like that was an automated system that we were using it was just uh probably a combination of 
you know, don't put, don't, don't uh, put yourself in the line of fire type thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So. So why did it, did it, did it slip? And when you put your, did you lean on it and put your body weight on it? Like what caused it to to slip off? I don't know. And to this day, I still don't know why it, uh, why it popped off the way it did, but uh, it, it happened and it just makes you more aware of since then I am like, I'm more aware of my surroundings and, and keep other guys when I'm on site, like, don't step on the hose, watch out for this, watch out for that. Um, because anything can happen really, right? If a hose parts and that fitting hits you, that's probably not going to feel very well, depending on where you get it. Right. So, so what is it that you would want people to know, you know, about avoiding a water jet cut? And if you get one, how to best go about recovering from it? Yeah. Uh, well, recovering from it, I would just uh, do as the doctors tell you, right? Yeah. <laughs> Stay on track with that and, um, um, like pay attention to your surroundings. And, um, uh, like if you're new into the industry, people who have been around for a while, typically they don't want to, nobody wants to see anybody get hurt. That's for sure. So, uh, having great mentorship is definitely key, I think. And, and, and that mentorship part, I mean, I think that's why I'm so appreciative of you sharing your story. You know, when you came in and told our employees about surviving, um, your water jet cut and, you know, seeing some of the pictures, I do think it is so impactful. Do you feel that because of your story that, that you can provide better mentorship and that people will listen to you maybe more so than others? Uh, well, I've reco recovered quite a bit and that's not something that I really, come out and tell everybody right away okay. that, you know that i've been cut uh but i definitely you know definitely uh take people under my wing and say hey you gotta watch out for this you gotta watch out for that you know you don't want to get stung it could be bad like plant water is never potable water right so just infection alone could really uh mess you up yeah i think that's what people don't understand is that uh, you know, when you get a water jet cut, the water goes down the path of least resistance. And so, you know, it, it's going to follow in your skin and your veins and, and, and carrying, you know, who knows what in that water that, you know, cutting a vein and, and the recovery from the actual cut is a big deal, but the infection, oh, um, sure. is something hugely to be concerned about. No, for sure. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Infection. Did be... you have any infection, um, or you did, you were able to avoid it entirely? Yeah, I was lucky enough, I think, because like when you're like 40, 40,000 PSI, like you're not, it's not huge gallons, but it is uh, like, I didn't have that much injected into me. And uh, as far as I know, anyways, going, you know, the, but the doctors, they clear, clean me all out. And then uh, I think uh, two days after laying in the hospital, they open me back up and clean me back out again, just to make sure. But, uh, yeah, I got lucky. I didn't have any infection. I think they were anticipating I'd be there for about three months in the hospital and, uh, made it out in three weeks. So it was, uh, wow. quite an experience. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Well, what, thank you for sharing it with us. I know that it's not easy to relive it, but I think it's really important for people to, you know, hear from a survivor, what it's like and, you know, and, and understand that. You can survive it, but you're lucky. You're very lucky for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely yeah. lucky. So what are your thoughts on the importance of safety and proper operation of industrial cleaning um, equipment? You know, has it changed since your accident? And, and you know, how do you really go about promoting it? Uh, yeah, like I said, like we, we really uh, do our procedures well and like i said mostly like we have a handful of guys that are experienced and we like to keep uh, somebody there to keep an out an eye out on the people that aren't so much experienced right so that you know like i said nobody nobody wants to see anybody get hurt that's the last thing the job is the job as long as everybody goes home safe that's the main thing yeah, absolutely. And do you think that that the equipment that's coming out there, I mean, do you look at it as added safety or added innovation for doing the job easier or both? Like what, oh, what's your viewpoint on that? hundred percent both. Like, uh, like you have triple auto feeding hoses, uh, you know, it's, you're running three lines instead of one, 
and then you don't have a guy in the line of fire with potential uh, water jet coming out of the hole or whatever, right? So it's most definitely moved in the right direction. Yeah, that's great. And what about training? How can the industry improve training to reduce the number of water jet cuts? Taking the online course just to get an understanding and then, uh, you know, pairing up with people that that uh, that have done it and they're, they've seen it. A little bit of hands-on. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that there should be improvement in training? Do you think that that's something that the industry could benefit from? I think it could, for sure. Like, it's you don't see a lot of it, really, right? Like, the online thing takes you so far, but then you need to eventually go out and actually perform the work. So, definitely. Yeah, understood. Good. All right. Well, thank you, Eric, for sharing your story. Is there anything else that you'd like to add before we go? Uh, no, I, I think we're pretty good. I'm pretty shy at this kind of thing. So <laughs> oh, you did great. I think it's such a powerful story and you uh, did an excellent job of sharing it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, Carrie. <laughs> all right, everybody. Well, I'm going to let Eric get back to work. I know he's got uh, turnarounds and all kinds of things going on. So uh, hang tight and I'll be right back. All right, everyone, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Eric. What an inspiring story. We're so lucky that he is here with us today. When he told this story to my employees several years ago, we were so moved at what he went through and inspired to make safer equipment that helps operators avoid injuries such as this one. The most important thing to us at Stone Age, and, and I know to so many people in the industry, is to make sure that when people using their equipment go home safely to their families every night. All right, with that, I will leave you until next month's episode where we have another fun guest talking about something completely different, uh, a hydro demolition. And I hope you have a very safe week. If you like this podcast, please write a review, like it, subscribe to it, share it with a friend. It always helps with the algorithms and it helps spread the amazing stories that we have in this industry that so often go untold or unheard. Thanks everyone. Take care.